six die in three vehicle collision in Alugaja. Heavy rain, thunderstorm wreak havoc in northern states. Good afternoon. You're watching the uh, 12.30 edition of News on 2. I'm Adrian Seat. Five in a family were amongst the six people killed in an accident involving three vehicles at the Alo Gaja Malaka Jasin Highway at Kampong Pegoh, heading to Simpang Ampat at 9.40 p.m. last night. Alo Gaja Police Chief Superintendent A. Asmadi Abdul Aziz said the vehicles were a Mitsubishi Triton, an Isuzu D-Max and a trailer lorry. Met by reporters at the scene, Asmadi said the dead were the Isuzu D-Max driver and his four passengers, as well as the driver of the Mitsubishi Triton. He said the trailer lorry and the Isuzu D-Max were heading to Simpang Empat from Malacca, while the Mitsubishi Triton was coming from the opposite direction. The accident was believed to have occurred when the Triton carrying a man and his daughter skidded into the opposite lane and crashed head-on with the Isuzu D-Max and the lorry. Asmadi said the five family members who perished in the accident comprised of a 57-year-old man, a woman aged 62, her 24-year-old daughter and two other children. The daughter of the Triton's driver sustained severe injuries while the lorry driver escaped unhurt. All victims were then taken to Malacca Hospital for post-mortem and treatment. The case is now being investigated under Section 41, Subsection 1 of the Road Transport Act 1987. Heavy rain and strong thunderstorms ripped through the northern states of Peninsular Malaysia on Friday evening. Now, strong winds and thunderstorms, which began at 8 p.m., had caused damage to business premises and private properties and uprooted trees in numerous locations in Perlis, Langkawi, Kedah, and Pulau Pinang. The Malaysian Meteorological Department had earlier issued a warning of thunderstorms, heavy rain and strong winds over the states of Perlis, Kedah, Pulau Pinang and Perak to occur until 2 a.m. Saturday. In Kedah, a female motorcyclist was hit by a car after she was thrown onto the road when a flying zinc roof hit her in front of Sharifah Fatima Mosque in Jitra last night. Kedah Police Chief Dato Zainuddin Yaakob said Marzia Omar, 27, from Taman Bersatu, died on the spot. Initial report by the Kedah Civil Defence Force stated that eight districts were badly affected, including Kota Star, Kubang Pasu, Pendang, Yan, Parang Terap, Kulim and Sik. Kedah Fire Rescue Department Assistant Director for Operations, Mohamadul Ehsan Mohamad Zain, said they had received 23 complaints on uprooted trees so far and efforts were being mounted to remove it. In Langkawi, Langkawi Disaster Management Committee Secretariat Captain P.A. Ahmad Shafikri Darus said 26 areas in the island were affected as at 11 p.m., including those in Kedawang, Boho, Padang Matsirat, Aihangat, Kuah, and Ulu Melaka. He said many houses and vehicles were damaged by fallen trees and branches. A restaurant operator in Jalan Pantai Chenang, Abdul Rashid Yahya, 43, said he and more than 10 customers ran helter skelter when the plastic table and chairs outside the restaurant were blown off by strong winds during the storm. A food truck worker, Mohammad Najri Rushaidi Azri, 18, said he was preparing a customer's order when he saw a water sprout swirling towards the area. In Pulau Pinang, multiple fallen tree accidents and property damage were reported in several areas in Georgetown, Sebrang Prai and Balik Pulau. State Welfare, Caring Society and Environment Committee Chairman P. Boon Po said five people were reportedly injured and had been taken to Sebrang Jaya Hospital for treatment. Pulau Pinang Fire Rescue Department spokesman when contacted said no death was reported so far. He said multiple fallen tree incidents, however, were reported in Paya Keladi, Kepala Batas, Laha Yui, Pokok Sena, Tasik Gelugo, Naga, Bertam and Kepala Batas in Sebrang Prai, as well as along the Gurney Drive, Tanjung Bunga, Jalan Baru Balik Pulau, Batu Fringi and Bayan Lepas on the island. 
The search and rescue operation to locate 15-year-old Franco-Irish teenager Nora Ann Curran has been boosted with the deployment of the Royal Malaysia Police Elite Team that 69 commandos. State Deputy Police Chief SEC Che Sakare Othman said the two officers and 21 members of the team had reported for duty yesterday. Che Zakaria said the VAT or Very Able Trooper 69 is an elite force that has the expertise and skills to assist in the operation. He said this in a briefing to reporters at a Pantai police station in Seremban yesterday. In addition, three personnel from the Federal Reserve Unit Charas, Kuala Lumpur, also assisted in the operation, bringing the total number of personnel involved in the operation to 261 compared to 252 yesterday. The SAR operation to locate 15-year-old who went missing from the Dusun Resort on Sunday entered the sixth day yesterday. Che Zakaria said the operation would continue focusing on the use of nine drones belonging to the police and private parties equipped with thermal imaging cameras. Nora Ann was reported missing after arriving at the resort with her parents from London on Saturday for a two-week vacation at a resort. The teenager was discovered missing from her room at 8 a.m. on Sunday. Meanwhile, Che Zakaria said there were no strong leads so far in the effort to locate Nora Ann, dismissing claims that the teenager's footprints had been found as reported by the media. Home Minister Tan Sri Muhyiddin Yassin yesterday questioned the motive of the claim by former Prime Minister Dato Sri Najib Tun Raza that he was targeted by an unidentified sniper in Perkan Pahang in 2017. He said it is strange that Dato Sri Najib is raising the matter now and did not do so in 2017 when he was the Prime Minister. Kita tahun 2017 ada kita dengar tuan-tuan hmm. dan kawan-kawan jadi pemberita kalau tak di sini pun di Pahang ada dengar ke kita kalau cek balik dalam berita-berita yang lampau baik media sosial dan lain tak dengar apa jadi kadang-kadang orang persoalkan betul ke tidak saya tidak kata bohong asal kalau betul ini satu perkara yang serius tapi kenapa tak ada tindakan dibuat terhadap perkara itu waktu mana beliau menjadi Perdana Menteri Tan Sri Muhyiddin spoke to the media after handing over cows for the Aidil Adha sacrificial slaughter for his Pago parliamentary constituents in Taman Pago Jaya yesterday. Dato Sri Najib, who is the MP for Pekan, said at the forum, hard truth, cash is king. At the AMNO headquarters recently, that the sniper had fired a shot at his room as a warning when he was not in the Pekan AMNO office. He posted on his official Facebook yesterday that he was not lying about the incident. Tan Sri Muhyiddin said his ministry does not regard the matter lightly and is prepared to conduct an investigation. And in some business news, innovative technology and solutions provider Dream Edge Sunyam Brahad has been chosen as the anchor company for the new national car project. Now, Dream Edge, according to the Minister of International Trade and Industry, Dato Dara Lei King, would receive support from Daihatsu Motor Company in advanced technology. Dato Darrell said the project will be fully privately funded, but the company is eligible to apply for grants from the government. Privately funded, no government funding at all. That, that uh, is what we know of. And again, Dream Edge will be the anchor who will lead it on a private funding basis. He spoke to reporters in a briefing held at Cyberjaya yesterday. The prototype of the car would be unveiled March next year, while the launching is slated on March 2021. Meanwhile, Dream Edge founder and chief executive officer Kairil Adri Adnan said the first model would be a sedan car in the C segment using hybrid technology. On to sports, Malaysia came back from a one-goal deficit to stun three-time champions Thailand 2-1 to emerge as champions in the 2019 AFF Under-15 Football Championship at the IPE Stadium in Chonburi, Thailand on Friday. Now, the victory saw P. Maniam's boys emulating the 2013 feat where Malaysia clinched the tournament title for the first time by defeating Indonesia 3-2 in a penalty shootout following a one-all draw after regulation time.
In the match, Thailand broke the deadlock via a Tikawin Chansri in the 16th minute before Malaysia fought back and scored two goals in the second half via Mohamed Isrin Ibrahim in the 69th minute and Mohamed Nabil Kiyum in the 79th minute, according to the Football Association of Malaysia Facebook page. For the record, Malaysia topped the Group B standings before edging Group A runners-up Vietnam 3-1 in the semi-finals tie on Wednesday. The national junior squad kicked off the campaign by whitewashing Brunei Darussalam 8-0 on the 28th of July, Cambodia 2-0 on the 30th of July, Australia 3-0 on the 1st of August before sharing the spoils in a one-all draw with Laos and hosts Thailand on 3rd and 5th of August respectively. The squad, which mostly comprised of Mokhtar Dahari Academy players in Kuantan Pahang, will return home today. In another tournament, Malaysia dropped from second to fifth place in the 2019 ASEAN Football Federation Under-18 Championships Group B, even after defeating Singapore 3-1 at the Throng Nang Stadium in Ho Chi Minh City on Friday. In their second match, after suffering a heartbreaking defeat against the hosts on Wednesday, the defending champion had made sure they were headed back into their winning ways by terrorizing the Singapore's defense, particularly in the first half. Malaysia claimed the lead as early as the sixth minute when Firdaus Khairun Nizam found the back of the net, but Singapore recovered well and kept the Harimau Muda at bay until the end of the first half. Six minutes into the second half, Firdaus doubled his and Malaysia's tally before Zamani Zamri pulled one back for Singapore in the 75th minute. However, a late goal from Lukman Hakim Shamsuddin was enough for Malaysia to claim the win. Malaysia would meet Cambodia on Sunday before completing the group fixtures against Australia on the 13th of August and Thailand on the 15th of August. And that story concludes this afternoon's News on 2. In our top story, six die in three vehicle collision in Alugaja. Join us again for more updates at 7 this evening. I'm Nijinsi. Thanks for watching.